Good afternoon, good afternoon everybody and welcome to the Safari Live Father's Day Special live from the Kruger National Park. Why am I in a tree? Well, I just like being in a tree. My name is James Hendry, David's on camera and we have an incredible show for you today live from the iconic Kruger National Park. We're in the middle of eight and a half million acres of untrammeled wildlife wonderland in the northeastern corner of what is possibly the world's most beautiful country. That is South Africa. It's a joy to have you along with us. Please talk to us over the course of the next two hours. Hashtag Safari Live. You can send us questions or comments or you can send us shout outs to your fathers and we'll do our best to get to all of them. Now, out in the bush today, you've already met Jamie and that wonderful leopards and dealer. Brent is scouring the land. He's like a sort of feral giraffe knocking about the place and the ultimate survivor on foot, Stefan Winterboer. You'll meet them all during the course of the drive. Now come over here. We've got some special technology here to show you some of the incredible wildlife that we have here. Let's go across to the dam camera now. There, that's the dam camera, everybody, and you can see a number of buffalo. And I'm going to show you something quite astonishing now. Next to the rover, whose name is Ronald, is another buffalo. Let's go to the rover camera now. Look at Ronald. Now, Ro <laughs> there's a buffalo you can see. I don't want to move Ronald. There's a buffalo right on the left hand side of Ronald's picture and if I move him I think the buffalo will either get a fright or stamp on me old pal Ronald and that will be an utter disaster. Behind there you can see another two buffalo, one in the water, one standing behind. This is the Cape Buffalo, a marvellous, marvellous animal and it is one of the iconic of course Big Five animals. It is, I'm going to just try, now you can see the rover there, you can see Ronald in the left hand side of your screen and as that buffalo turns his head I'm just going to turn Ronald a little, whoops, the daisies, sorry about that. Now what we're doing here is some sort of experimentation. What we have is a situation where we're interacting with the animals. Ideally we don't want to be, ideally we want to be observing completely. You've seen that we've had the vehicle and the animals have become completely sort of uh, habituated to the vehicles which means that they just get on with their lives without us worrying about them. The same thing we're going to do with Ronald the Rover over the coming months. This is only his second appearance and it's a joy to have him with us. You are most welcome, it's great to have you with us. Hashtag Safari Live, send us your questions and comments and shout outs. Let's go to the only father on the team, the magnificent specimen that is Stefan Winterboer. Welcome, a very, very warm welcome to the bushwalk segment of this afternoon's sunset safari here on Father's Day. I just want to say a happy Father's Day to all of you and believe me, we're in for a treat this afternoon. Starting off with this, a tropical tent web spider. One of my favorites, I'm Stefan Winterboer and on camera today is jean -Dre. and we love these smaller things. Now we are live, we are coming to you on foot from exactly the same bush that Brent and Jamie are driving around in only we don't have any cars to protect us as you can see <laughs> and also nothing from stopping Andre from falling over backwards into the hole he almost dived into <laughs> all right now this particular spider we actually don't see them too often this is a female spider she's got her tent web lying horizontally to where we are right now and her speciality is catching grasshoppers. Grasshoppers that fly from the ground into the tree, get caught up in all these entanglement snares that you can see between you and me right now. And then they fall into her web, which is lying horizontal and just above where you see her lying at the moment. She's lying around about there and looks like a little piece of bark to you and me right now. She looks like she's actually got a bit of a fly lunch and what she'd be doing at the moment, she'd have injected it with her venom. That venom is busy basically turning that fly into a fly milkshake and then she sips up and sucks out that milkshake, discarding the leftover pieces all over the web here. Isn't that amazing? I said we don't really see these spiders too often. Generally speaking, they get knocked out of their webs quite easily and displaced quite easily. We're so lucky that we get to see her the whole time. Alright, and that 
tropical tent web spider. And on that note, we're going to send you over to Brent. He's got an update for you. Welcome to Safari Live. My name's Brent. I have Brian and the incredible Thumb on camera today. We've just got a report from our tracking team on this Father's Day spectacular that there's a massive herd of elephants on the southern section of the reserve. So we're speeding along to try and get there. I'm hoping because it's Father's Day, we're going to find a massive elephant bull and of course some fathers to be amongst the little guys running around. So really, really great start to the day. Leopard and incredible, incredible how the wilderness just seems to keep giving. And oh, speaking of elephants, that is what you call an elephant roadblock. Now incredibly strong animals, they've pushed down this massive tree across the road and uh, I'm definitely not going to be strong enough to move that so I'm going to have to bundu bash around it. Of course, a huge Father's Day. Happy, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out in the world. And uh, especially also to my dad who is watching. Normally he doesn't watch. Uh, he's normally on game drive at the same time I am. So happy Father's Day uh, to my dad who I know is watching. And hopefully he'll be with those elephants shortly. Now remember, if you want to send a shout out to your dad, if you want uh, to send us a question about what we're seeing on this live African safari, you can do that by using the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. So while we dash through this beautiful African savanna, let's go across to Jamie, who's with that young male leopard. And we don't need to do any dashing about the savanna. We've got this incredible young male leopard right here in front of us on a live safari. I have to introduce you to this young boy. His name is Sindile and he has a story that is absolutely one of the most incredible that I have ever heard. Now a year ago when we knew Sindile, when he was just a cub, he was just under a year old, he was like any other normal young male leopard playful, learning, experimenting and learning to hunt. His mother Shadow was, is a fantastic female leopard, the daughter of the famous Queen of Juma, Karula, a leopard dynasty that has been followed for years across the world. And then Sindile's luck changed completely and everything was totally turned on its head in his life. Now he caught and killed a stray dog that had somehow managed to wander from the townships into the game reserve and it was something that was seen on our live safaris and very unfortunately that dog tested positive for rabies and we were all filled with fear that that might be the end of Sindile's life as a wild leopard but due to the incredibly committed work of vets and various rehabilitation centers Sindile was placed into quarantine for about eight months before being released into the wild after a course of vaccinations against rabies and here he is today just two and a half months after his release back into the wild and that is why he wears a collar as he does it's to help the people in charge of him up to date on his movements and his health now uh, yesterday we had the most phenomenal story that played out with Brent, one that had us all sitting on the edge of our seats filled with terror and also in our own way completely torn between Sindile and his mother. So if you missed our, bless you, <laughs> yeah, boy. If you missed our live safari yesterday, it was the first time that Sindile had been seen back with his mother and his mother had a, has a brand new three month old cub and she was calling frantically to try and locate her cub and fighting with Sindile, growling at him, trying to keep her, him away from the cub. We had absolutely no idea how the situation was going to play out and incredibly we had to find that the cub was alive and that there was a happy ending to this entire story. It was just absolutely magical and an incredible story. Now, uh, Tom, you were wondering whether or not we would ever interfere with a leopard that was trying to kill a cub. 
Tom, unfortunately, we absolutely couldn't. We can't. The only time that we will ever interfere is as with happened with Sindile, where the reason that that animal is in the situation that it's in is because of the actions of man themselves. In this case, his exposure to a domestic dog. Our leopards have become famous and much loved across the world. James is in the tent at the moment and he has some of their stories to tell you. Welcome back to my wonderful office here in the midst of, well, the wilderness. It's a joy to be here and it's a joy to be with you. We've got a couple of shout outs come through already. Joe, you want to wish your father Pete a very happy Father's Day. Thank you for that. Uh, Chelsea, all the way from Vermont, wishes to, she's uh, obviously right here in the Sabi Sands, want to, wants to send a shout out to her father Ted Green in Vermont as well. We'll get through a couple more as we go through the rest of the afternoon. Now, I've got something quite special to show you, but I'm not going to let David show you what it is. It's under the microscope. Have a look at this. Now, what I want you to do, everybody, is tell me what you think that is. It is a male. It was probably a very good, well, it was probably a father, not the most attentive fathers in the world. But see if you can get from what's in the microscope there what that animal is. Send your answers through to hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Alternatively, well, that's the only way you can do it really. Uh, and certainly send us your shout outs for your fathers. We still want to hear from you all the time. Now, the leopards of this area, of Juma specifically, we have a relationship with and we've had some incredible interactions with them. Have a look quickly at these sort of highlights of our relationship with the leopards of Juma. The leopard is the ultimate combination of feline beauty, power and strength. This is the complete ambush predator, solitary, elusive and stealthy. The leopard either grabs its prey in a lethal throat hold that silences and suffocates, or it severs the spine with one bite. Leopards will eat anything from termites all the way to giraffe. They also prey on other predators. But protection and mentorship of young leopards falls to their mother. And none is more famous at Juma than Karula. This extraordinary leopardess has raised eight cubs, a testimony to both her skill and her luck. In February this year, Karula gave birth to two perfect little cubs, a playful male and a more reserved female. With the proper learning and luck, these leopards will stalk Juma for years to come. Ah! Leopard. There's a quick look at some of the prints of cats. I think my most favorite cat out here and what a joy it is to be spending the amount of time that we do with them. This is a male leopard skull and I'm just going to put it next to my own so you can see a general size. Sindile, who you're about to go and see again, is, well, he's a bit smaller than this. He's probably about 70% the size of this one. So he's got a bit of growing to do. He'll soon get some fairly, uh, well, he's already got very large teeth, but they'll get even larger, believe it or not. Let's go back to him and find out what he's doing. On this very special Father's Day, we bring you the magic of a live safari. Now, my name is Jamie, and this is Sindile, and this is the most phenomenal way to start off an afternoon game drive. Now, Sindile has moved from where he was yesterday on Arethusa right into the heart of Juma Private Game Reserve, and we're actually sitting not more than 500 yards away from where James is at the tent. And looking at Sindile now, this is the first time I have seen him in close to a year since he was taken into quarantine. And to see him now looking so good, so well fed, he looks like he's got not a full, full belly, but he's looking healthy and he is just looking extraordinary. I'm so happy to see a leopard that had wormed his way into my heart, but is now even more so due to the odds that he's had to face and what he has overcome in order to be where he is today. And we have a lot of people to thank for that. <laughs> the flies are driving him absolutely insane. It really is the most incredible sight to see. And that collar 
serves a hugely important function in monitoring his movements and making sure that he is still healthy and okay. And don't you find it absolutely amazing that a leopard could be in quarantine for as long as Sindile was and still be released straight back into the wild, hunt for himself, look after himself. I mean, when he was taken into quarantine, he was just a tiny cub. Well, not a tiny cub, but he was still at least a year from independence from his mother. And yet here he sits, a male leopard, not quite in his prime, but with every hope of reaching it. And if Sindile does go on to become a father, he's got a long way to go yet, a good couple of years before he's big enough and strong enough to compete for his own territory. But I think that if his personality is anything to go by, if the way that he's survived the odds so far tells us anything, it's that our Sindile is going to be a force to be reckoned with when he is older. Now he's resting up in the shade because it's an absolutely extraordinarily warm day here in the African bush despite the fact that we are in totally the middle of our winter. But he's found himself the perfect shady spot, very comfortable, with his head framed by thorns. Our little survivor is still going strong. And speaking of survival and survival skills, Steph would like to show you a few tricks and trades of the African bush. Welcome back to the bushwalk everybody and for those of you who have just joined us, my name is Steph Vintibur and you are on foot in the middle of Juma Private Game Reserve all the way from South Africa's Kruger National Park. And what we've got here is a massive pile of elephant dung and what elephant dung is good for is a variety of things but on this a very very special Father's Day I'm going to show you how we transport fire using elephant dung. And the reason I'm doing this is because I love making fire with my little boy. And I tell you, there's nothing better than sitting down, preparing the sticks, getting it all good. I love it more than anything. So let's, here it goes. I'm not very good at doing this. I must be honest with you. Sometimes it doesn't really work that well, but I'm going to give it a bash. So what do we use? Is a piece of dried elephant dung, and then I use a magnesium stick. We send some sparks into the elephant dung. As you can see, it starts to smolder quite readily. And then you just coax a flame out of it by blowing. And not only is this a good way of transporting fire, as you can see, it smolders, you can keep it, you can keep fire going like this for an age. Not only is it a good way of, of, uh, of transporting fire, but the smoke that comes off of this elephant dung is actually used traditionally for a headache cure. So you blow on it, and the smoke, you waft over, over your face, breathing it in lightly, and apart from the slight bit of euphoria that it gives you, a little light-headedness. Right, we're going to be going into an ad break soon. You have to stay and watch. We've got something really, really surprising coming up straight after that. <laughs> 